Hello everybody, Dan Tsukakyo. Get the thumbs up now, well. My name is Randy Moore and I'm here to tell you a story. But first I want to thank the Saskatoon Public Library for making this event happen. Uh, they're very supportive of Indigenous storytelling. And so today I'm going to tell you a story called Kisigaupisim Ego Tipsigaupisim Sun and Moon. And by the way, my name is Randy Moore. I introduced myself in my previous story and I just want to, I want to welcome you all here. So, so my book here, illustrated by Mitchell Poundmaker, Mitchell Poundmaker. This is my second book. My first book is called Sun and Moon, Sun and Moon. And, uh, but this, this story is based on the lives of my two children. We live in Saskatoon and me and my wife, we have two beautiful children, Kisik and Kisei. And uh, I wrote this book based on their experiences when we go to the reserve. Uh, they're very lucky they have both set of grandparents. So my parents and my wife's parents. And so, so we get to visit both places. So anyway, I'm wearing my lucky Sagihtawin hat, which means love. Sagihtawin means love. Uh, because we need love. So anyway, here we go. This book is about love. It's about humor. Uh, it's about relationships with one another, with the natural world. It's about teachings and values and uh, indigenous knowledge systems, right? Old knowledge systems. Okay, so here we go. Contemporary times to say. That's the first page. One early Saturday morning, twin siblings, Sun and Moon, woke up. They were excited. They were going to spend a weekend at their Mushroom and Kukum's house on the reserve. I also wrote it in Cree. Piagwawi Patsi Xipayak, Nisuti Waki Scalpi Sim, Egotip Scalpi Sim, Emotsi One Scatsik, E Wintel Yukoatik, Omosumuawa, Ego Okamuawa, Askihanik. But for the sake of this storytelling, I'll just tell it in English. <laughs> Big River First Nation, which is my community, was about two hours away uh, north of Saskatoon. So mom and dad drove Sun and Moon to the reserve to drop them off. And you can see they're leaving the city and their city is getting destroyed by Godzilla. <laughs> so cute illustrations there by my friend uh, Mitchell Palmaker. When they pulled up, Mushroom was outside chopping firewood. He was so happy to see his grandchildren. He dropped his axe, rushed over to give each of them big mushroom bear hugs. Kukum, who was waiting on the front step, said, Me too. Astam, come here, my babies, and hugged the children with all her heart. Then Mushroom said, Hey, kids, I have a good idea. Let's go for a walk around the lake. It's a beautiful day today. When we get back, we will eat some of that delicious rabbit soup and bannock that your kukum has been cooking all day. As you can see, the love. Sagihtuin. Res dogs. Every reserve has res dogs. <laughs> Nobody had to ask Sun and Moon twice. The kids' parents gave them quick hugs and waved goodbye. The twins were off racing down the path towards the lake. As Mushum started walking down the trail to catch up, his dogs came running to join them on their walk. There were all kinds of dogs on the reserve. There were big dogs, small dogs, funny looking dogs, even mean looking dogs. Mushum patted a friendly one on the head and said, Did you know these dogs? They are our protectors at night. They have always been here for us, even before the horses got here. So dogs deserve respect. Mean dogs, small dogs, big dogs, even funny looking dogs. Beautiful illustrations by Mitchell Palmaker. Mushroom and the kids kept walking. Then Mushroom said, Look way up to the top of the tree. What do you see? 
And Moon said, Is that a nest? Yes, that's an eagle's nest. We are blessed to have eagles living with us because they are our relatives and they are sacred birds. Mushum reached into his pocket and pulled out some tobacco and he carefully put it at the base of the tree. Curious, Sun and Moon both looked at him quietly. After he put the tobacco down, he told him, we always pay respect to our relatives by offering them tobacco and to thank them for everything they do for us. This is our way. So they continued walking until they came upon a giant red anthill. Sun said, These ants are way bigger than the ants we have in the city. And Mushroom laughed. Are they? Bigger and tougher, eh? Maybe we should call them res ants. You can learn a lot about these ants by watching how they work together as a community. They all work together to raise their young ones. And Moon said, Mom told us that we should never step on him. She always carries them outside when they are in our house. She tells them that their house is outside in the grass. Mushum laughed and replied, that's good because they are our relatives as well. Don't torture animals, don't kill them. They have every right to be here. I mean insects, sorry. One second. Oh, cold coffee. Down the trail they went. Sun came up to a small garter snake and jumped. Mushroom said, Whoa, careful, grandchild. There's no need to be scared of our little relative here. Moon said, But everyone is scared of snakes. So Mushroom explained that snakes serve a good purpose by keeping a balance of life on the ground because they eat rodents like mice and rats. He chuckled. They have no interest in us boring humans. So snakes, just respect them and be careful about them. They do serve a purpose as well as rats, dragonflies. And they come into a beaver, a beaver colony. So you can see the beavers are hard workers. You can see the Loch Ness Monster. No water there, the Loch Ness Monster. There's always lake monsters on reserves. Story for another time. The lake's trail continued until they came upon a tree that had been cut down by a beaver. Mushroom explained the fallen tree, then said, have a look at this tree here, grandchildren. I can tell that this winter is going to be cold because beavers only cut trees this size when they need more food for winter. Mushroom rolled up his sleeves and lifted the tree out of the way. From here, they could see Mushroom and Kukum's house just up the hill. Look at the size of that tree Mushroom's lifting. So, Mushroom's strong. Second last page. They were all very hungry by the time they got back. They walked into the house and smelled fresh bannock and rabbit soup. Kukum chuckled. You kids look hungry. Mushroom must have taken you on quite an adventure. Come, sit down and eat. You can smell the bannock. Smell the rabbit soup and the berries. I miss my grandma. You know, she used to cook that for me all the time. Uh, and as, as I mentioned, we buried her last year. She was 107 and she ate traditional. No salt, no sugar, you know, no rice, <laughs> all wild meat. Last story, this is the last page. After they had eaten, Mushum announced they were going to build a fire in the backyard for an evening of marshmallows and storytelling. Sun and Moon were thrilled and rushed out of the house to start collecting the wood that Mushroom had cut. Sun suddenly stopped and asked Mushroom for some tobacco. 
Kukum was curious. Hmm, my poor grandchild, why do you need tobacco? And son said, before we use the wood, we want to give the trees thanks for being our relatives and for letting us use them for fire. Mushu and Kukum looked at each other, smiled. It was so nice to have their grandchildren there to visit them for the weekend. As you can see, all the ants came to listen, all the beavers came to listen, the snakes came to listen. All the creatures that they encountered on their walk came to listen to the stories that Mushum was sharing with his grandchildren. And that is the end. That's my little book, Sun and Moon. So thank you everybody for listening to me. It's been an honor to share uh, stories. That, that's, that story was aimed more for like young children. So I want, again, I want to thank uh, Saskatoon Public Library for making this happen. Uh, Megan Stesic, making it happen. And I look forward to uh, telling you more stories in the future. Again, it's been an honor. My name is Randy Morin, and, and I thank you all for listening. Hi, hi. Thank you.